Do you want to get better at Street Fighter 6, but you're just tired of sitting in the trading mode and just trying to do all these crazy combos? Two things. First, long combos don't really make you that much better of a player. And secondly, you came to the right video to help you improve and get better in Street Fighter 6. Let's get into it. Take it one step at a time. Street Fighter 6 has a ton of training mode options and ways to practice and improve your skills as any character that you want to play. Today I'm playing Manon, but anything you see here today can be utilized with any character you play. And it's not just training mode either that'll help you get better. But in training mode, let's say you got a character you've picked out. You got some fun basic combos you know how to do with your character. You have a basic understanding of how footies work in the game with all the fundamentals like drive parry, like drive impact. You know how the game kind of works. You just want to get better. The first thing you're going to want to do is of course take it one step at a time. And what I mean by that is what is the first thing that you want to work on finding ways to practice on that one thing and then go on to the next one so a couple of tips for you guys when playing practice mode in street fighter 6 there are a couple settings as you see here our screen's kind of blank there we can just train and do combos we can be like okay i can do this i can do that okay i can do all that that's all fine and fun but how do you make it better in your settings you have screen display settings now a couple things you want to turn on and off the first thing i would turn on is attack data now the reason why you want to turn this on is of course you want to see how much damage a combo might do so this this combo does 1100 damage, which is cool. But the biggest thing you want to see is what attacks do overhead and low. So this attack, that's an overhead, meaning if my opponent is blocking but they're crouching, it'll still hit. And same with my sweep here, that's the low. Okay, so that, that move hits low. So if they're blocking normally, so for an example, if my opponent's blocking a lot and I'm like, okay, what are they doing? I know I have this option to sweep them. So even if they're blocking high, they won't, they can't block that. Another thing that I would turn on personally is this frame meter. I'm gonna turn my camera off just for a second so you can see what I'm talking about here. This is the frame meter, meaning it shows you the startup of a move, the total active frames of it and then the advantage you have and your opponent has as well so for an example my medium puncher that has six startup four active 14 recovery whereas my light punch has three startup three active so the faster move that comes out is my light punch it's twice as fast as my medium punch and my heavy punch is nine on startup now another reason why this matters is because your special moves also have different properties depending on what type you use so for an example for Manon's command grab we have three versions of it her heavy version as you see there is four on startup which is pretty fast then the medium version of the move is seven on startup and the light version is nine on startup so what that means for me is okay my heavy version of my command grab is actually faster the trade-off is the heavy version see how we missed that it doesn't really have that good of range with the light version it connects so i'm going to say okay so my my command grab my light version is a bit slower but it has a bit more range than my heavy version does so if i want to come out faster i need to make sure that i'm closer to my opponent to then do my heavy version of. so having this on teaches you what moves are faster what moves are unsafe or not safe what moves have good advantage on block and stuff like that another thing that i would turn on is this cancel timing display the reason why i would turn that on is you see our character here manon she glows red on certain moves now, on that first hit but not the second you see that and what that means for you as a character is when i turn red that means i can cancel but what does cancel mean cancel means you can go into a special move a super a rush cancel so i can do medium into special i can do medium into super i can even rush after that move into another combo Another example for Manon is our back medium medium target combo that first hit nothing But the second hit it's an overhead I see there and it's also cancelable So I say oh that's a good option for me because it's an overhead and it's cancelable into something else so Then I think okay, I can do a special after that. What should I do? I can enhance my kick and what does that mean? I can do another special move after that so I can go back medium medium and then end it with another special here and get a full on combo. And you might be asking yourself, well, one step, what does that blue, th what does that blue mean? See that blue right there we just turned? So blue means you still can cancel, but only into very specific things, like some supers and some specials. So after this kick, for an example, I can't go into a lot of stuff, but I can go into my spinning kick and I know I can go into a super if I want to as well. It's usually for supers, I'm not gonna lie to you. So there's a ton more settings you can go into for training. These are the basic ones that I would use to understand the training lab a lot better. And, and, and of course your character and go, okay, what is my character doing? Is it overhead, is it low? What's the damage on it? What's the frame on it? What's the cancel on it? These will teach you the fundamentals of your character and even the game and essentially just help you get better because of your understanding. Knowledge is power. Okay, I'm back, what's up? And a great thing to practice is your simple training settings here. You see we have with punish practice, punish practice, drive impact, defense practice. This this is great because drive impact is a great mechanic and a utilized mechanic no matter what level you're at silver bronze iron gold diamond whatever you're gonna see 
speed drive impact happen. You gotta understand how do I defend against it? Let's go ahead and turn it on. Okay, so we're gonna turn this setting on. We see our opponent here, Ryu's gonna do a drive impact. What can we do for it? We can block it, sure. But what this is doing is having Ryu go through four different kind of modes here, and he's gonna do drive impact at different times. We can choose, okay, do we wanna drive impact against it? Like do, when we recognize that the drive impact is coming out, how do we react? Do we wanna parry it? Do we wanna grab them? Do we wanna drive impact ourselves? I would recommend practicing all of that just for the sake of practice, right? So when you recognize a drive impact in game, your reaction is gonna be a lot faster because you've been practicing this and go, okay, do I need to grab at this moment? Do I need to drive impact? What do I do? So let's go and try it out. Let's react. Oh, we barely reacted to that with our own drive impact. There we go. Now we get our own combo off. He's gonna do it again. Let's go ahead and grab him instead. There we go. We punish it for that. Now let's parry it. There we go. Can we perfect parry it? Let's try that. There we go. Now we got our own thing going on. So that just teaches you how to react to drive impact and that's great to have. And that's something that I'm personally still working on is trying to react to other people's drive impact and beat it with my own. It can be tight timing and hard to get the hang of, but once you do, it'll be a very powerful tool in your kit that you do not want to miss out on. By the way, my dudes, if you're enjoying yourself here, make sure to subscribe here for more content because we have new videos Monday and Friday. And who doesn't want more content? Now that's all fun and games in training mode. You can probably spend literal hours, dozens of hours in training and practicing all those things to try to get better and improve your skill set. Another way to practice is two things. I have made beginner guides for all the characters. Card up top right now. But in the game, they have character guides here. So if you want to start from scratch and go, okay, I want to learn how to play DJ. I have no idea what this guy is about. What can I do with DJ? They have basic info all the way through the special moves and tell you what they do, how they work, all their super arts and best ways to use them. And then of course, strategies, fundamentals, and advanced as well for all the characters to help you get a very easy and fast understanding of the character in a matter of, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. And then not only that, they have combo trials to help you understand the character at a beginner, intermediate, and advanced level. And of course, these are not all the combos the character can do. These are just to teach you, hey, these are some fun ones that can go together combo wise to help you go, oh, okay, how can I make my own combos now? Like, let's say I wanna do this combo with Manon, which is a medium drive rush into a back heavy down special into a super move. Now, what this teaches me is off the bat, oh, I can rush cancel after medium. I didn't even know that. And of course, you can end this however you want. I can go medium rush, back heavy into any special I want. So though, sure, I can follow and do this move. I can end with whatever special I want, not just down special. But for an example, that was forward special, but it's still connected, and it's the way that I want to end the combo. I can even enhance that if I want to, and then end it again there. So though this is trying to have you do a specific combo, it's also teaching you what moves can go into what moves. Not only that, but in World Tour mode, there are so many mini games in World Tour to help you improve your skill set on these little things, such as parrying. There's a basketball mini game where the game will actually throw basketballs at you to help you practice your timing for the parry, try to get perfect parries, and then it'll throw a character at you to try to grab you, you gotta jump out of the way. There's another mini game that helps you understand when to jump and attack, when to stand attack, when to low attack with the board break. This is a really good mini game to help you shimmy, help you go for lows, help you for the poke game, help you with the footsies, to see when your opponent's blocking high or low and what to go for. I know this all might sound my new and simple, but you can't go advanced without getting the basics down first. If you're having trouble with the inputs, such as back down forward or forward down back or back forward square, whatever it is you're trying to work on with inputs, there's another input practice mini game in World Tour. You see here on screen, we're trying to do, you know, back and then down all the way then to our Y, then a Y and then down diagonally B. Let's say you're struggling with all that, this mini game helps you with that to get the timing down and really get your inputs in correctly. And then if you play a charge character like Guile, E Honda, DJ, and others, there's a charge input practice mini game as well to help you with your charge timing. And a lot of people that want to play these characters, I've noticed in my comment section do struggle with the timing on this. And this is a great mini game besides just practicing in the lab. This mini game helps you with the timing of those moves and go, oh, that's how long, or this is how fast I can do this, or whatever, it just helps you with that. So though not every character is a charge character, this still helps you with those characters and the timing of just playing the game in general. Not only that, but believe it or not, extreme battles are also a great way to practice the fundamentals of Street Fighter. Don't believe me? Check out the game mode with the rule set Heaven and Hell. And here's why Heaven and Hell is so good. It gives you a positive bonus and a negative bonus on fighting. So for me, I have a larger perfect parry window. Great, but I cannot dash. Dashes are disabled. So this teaches you how can I fight without dashing? I can jump in, sure, but then how do I get in there without dashing? I can't rush cancel either, that's that, that's called dashing. I can't dash forward, so how do I get in there, walk? So this teaches you like shimmying, this helps you with that, get in with special moves instead, but I cannot dash. I'm probably gonna have to jump in and go, okay, I can jump in, what are my combos when I jump in? Or for this example, I have special moves disabled, which is really rough for Manon, because she relies heavily on her special moves a lot of the time. So this teaches me, okay, what can I do without special moves? What combos do I have that are 
effective without my special moves on me. So it's like, okay, this really teaches you why like, you can't get in with your spinning kick, that's a special move. You can jump in, but for heavy handy, that's great. So this teaches you how to actually react or how to, you know, kind of zone your opponent or get into your opponent's face without the use of special moves. Another great one that I like to use a lot is rules and regulations. And the reason why this game mode is not a health based fighting game. This gives you and your opponent four objectives to complete during the match. You see here for us, knock down our opponent twice, throw one time, do a three hit combo and jump attack twice. So this teaches you, okay, I don't have to do anything crazy. I just got to do these couple things, jump and attack, let's do it again. So we, we jumped in, got punished for that, right? So we gotta try it again, there we go. Now we gotta do a, like a three hit combo. I can do that, I'm sure, right? There we go, we got three hit combo. Now I gotta throw my opponent here. But this teaches you not just what to do, but also how to do it. Like, okay, when's the best time to throw? Cause I gotta throw to win this game. So I gotta be like, okay, I gotta shimmy here, play my footsies game. Oh, he got one objective. So he's gotta throw me. I'm on the lookout for that now. He's gotta drive parry and use his projectiles. Okay, so I gotta be able to see, there he goes. I gotta be on the lookout for all of this. I gotta knock down my opponent one more time. So I'm gonna try to sweep him to knock him down. There's my knockdown. We win, cause we did all of our objectives there. And then we're gonna get new objectives this time. So we gotta jump attack, throw a special move and knock down our opponent. And he also has new ones too. So I gotta be on the lookout. He's gotta use overdrive arts and drive impact and drive parry while we're trying to do all of our stuff. So we gotta really kind of focus on like, okay, how do we get in there? We gotta jump attack, we gotta throw, there's a jump attack, here's a throw. Knock down our opponent that way. Special move, three hits, here we go. One more, there we go. So we, we complete our objectives that way. Best way to practice is to think of your training mode here as a lab or as an experiment, make it sound scientific, right? Because here is a scientific method for fighting games. Start with your observation or a question. This character keeps doing a combo on me that I just can't get past. Or how do I beat other characters, drive impact or their OD special move? And then form a hypothesis to your question. Go, I wonder if I block when they hit with their heavy button, I can punish with a sweep or a grab afterward and just test it out. Maybe the button or the move you're thinking of does work or it doesn't work. And then you go, okay, well that does not work in this situation. Now I have to think of another solution and try that one out. And then even if you find a solution, make sure you analyze the data. And what I mean by that is does your solution work consistently and can you do it comfortably? Because if you can do it, you can only do it like one out of five times. Maybe there's another solution out there that might be a bit easier for you and be more consistent. A good mindset to have about this training mode here is this is where you find some solutions to your problems you can practice your combos of course practice your timing for drive impacts and other things and then once you do this go online casual ranked battle hub whatever fight new opponents come up with new problems and then have fun trying to find solutions to those problems in the lab like oh man i just fought a crazy jp he was zoning me out with my character how do i get in there go into lab fight a jp put him on cpu whatever and try to get in there come up with a solution see if those solutions work or not I promise you you keep doing that over and over again you will find solutions in your arsenal and once you practice them you will get better at them i hope this video helped you in your training strategies if it did give this video a thumbs up and let me know down below how do you like to practice in street fighter 6 and who's your main character. Mine is Manon. Subscribe here for more fighting game content. Take it one step at a time and I will see you in the next one.